Okay, welcome back to the shop. What you see me doing here is I'm unloading a truck. Just pulled up. It has 25 12 foot long, 1 quarter inch by 2 inch thick cold rolled steel bars. They're very heavy. And now I'm using my old Craftsman bandsaw to cut them up. A lot of people ask why I prefer the bandsaw more than anything else. Primarily because it's not deafeningly loud and it doesn't throw sparks and does not throw debris in the air. It's relatively quiet and relatively safe when it's your eyes and your ears you're talking about. And I can stack up a whole bunch and just make a slow clean cut through all of them. You get some really nice accurate cuts if you take your time and you have some good stoppers. In one of these pieces of video you could see I have a, a long rod with a stopper at the end. And there I cut all my pieces. It's great to get those big giant 12 foot bars into more manageable pieces. So this is the Monday after Christmas and my welding supplier was closed and so uh, inspired by Matt Cremona if you don't know Matt Cremona take a look at his channel he just made a giant mo uh, bandsaw he just made a bandsaw mill in his backyard with a stick welder I haven't stick welded in over 20 years and considering I had no gas I said let me just tack all my parts together with stick weld so I used 60 63 stick welder and the Lincoln MP210 MP meaning multi-process, so I could switch the settings to go to use the stick welder. And all my stick welds aren't very clean, and they're a little grody, but all my stick weld tacks are going to be on the inside. And the following day, when I get the gas, I'm going to do all my clean welds that are going to be the outside welds. And all the welds were beveled a little bit, so that when I do weld, I build up a nice penetration. So I'm just filing them just to clean them, not necessarily to get rid of them. And now here I'm making my bigger pieces. This is just a big scrap wood. This is just a big scrap wood on two saw horses. And you'll notice how I fixture everything just so everything is the same. And when you fixture, it doesn't need to be something complicated. In my case here, I just have four pieces of scrap plywood screwed to the table. And I was working all night long. And as I worked, it got darker and darker, and I was lighting up the whole yard with the welder. You can see the clouds rolling by me there. My shop is getting smaller and smaller with the equipment I'm getting, so I need to build a bigger shop, which hopefully will come this summer. And now this is the next day. Danny is the client, and he was interested in learning how to weld, so he asked if he can come and hang out with me while I worked on all these parts. And so, of course... I welcome the help. So Danny came and now I'm welding the other side. All the inside tacks are done with the stick and now all the outside are going to be done with the MIG. And Danny learned a great deal about how to grind and get rid of the welds until we have a nice clean look because this is all the outside surfaces. And I like to use 3M Cubetron which really devours the weld. And now we're ready to start assembling our sides, our pieces. I'm putting a nice big tack to keep them together. And uh, once I know that we're basically square with my diagonal measurements, I really drive it home. Lay in a couple of big fat beads. Now the, the bottom part of the table is going to ultimately get a flat piece of plywood in it. The top is going to get butcher block. And there we are just trading letting Danny weld some, I'm welding some. And now here you see I used my my first frame as a guide for my second frame. This is going to be a long bar bench. It's like a long bar table. It's going to have the stool slide under it so it only has one bar in the back just to kind of maintain some stability. And so I'm welding and grinding as I go. Like I said, every seam gets welded from both sides and all the steel gets beveled before it gets tacked together so I don't grind away the weld that is structural. And now here I am at Lumber Liquidators. This isn't a plug, it just happens to be the place that sells these good butcher blocks. And the 12 foot and 8 foot, so I bought 212 and 28 and the tables are 60 by 30 ultimately and so I cut all those pieces down to manageable sizes to carry on the truck. And now here it's the next day. This is the whole week between Christmas and New Year's. And now we're welding in the tabs that are going to carry the butcher block on the top. 
I'm welding and tacking, and Danny's welding and tacking and drilling. And this is the bottom. This is going to be sort of the case. This is going to be tables for a maker space in a high school. So the kids come into class and they have book bags and stuff. So this bottom rung is going to carry a piece of plywood. Basically going to be a bottom shelf. By the end of this video, I don't put that wood in just because we didn't have the right color. But the tops will be put on. So just tacking in all the, the various pieces. And we went to Harbor Freight and picked up a set of casters for each table. And we have locking casters for each table. And they're the kind of the casters, they look like rollerblade wheels and they work really well. And we just welded them in place. And a lot of people say, well, what if they break? You just watch me make five tables from scratch. If the caster breaks, I grind it off and weld another one on. It's obviously not a big deal, considering I just created them from scratch. And there's just a lot of process. And the way to tackle all this process is just to try and do it systematically. And I always say when you have a lot of things like this, you go to school on the first couple, and then you have your pattern. Now here we are making the tables, the tops rather. Now you'll notice I, I rough cut them because I wasn't 100% sure how long they should be so I just rough cut them and so now I'm clean cutting them. And I, I do an interesting technique when I cut a big piece like this you see I put that ruler behind it and it keeps it from falling down once the cut goes all the way through. So each one of these is 60 by 30 but these pieces only come 25 inches wide. So you'll see me do some woodwork in a minute. Again I do my ruler trick so the piece doesn't flop on the ground. And now here it is the evening, the snow is kicking up, so I turn on my forge. This is my little horseshoe forge, keeps the room warm. And so now what I'm ripping is a fifth piece of 60 inch butcher block. I rip it into five inch strips. Now each one of those five inch strips is going to be added to each one of the other four 60 inch wide tops. So I will have a full 60 by full 30 inch wide top. Again, the stock only comes 25 inches wide. And there you see it glued together. I use biscuit joints. I had to warm up the room so the glue could <laughs> flow, literally. It was about 15 degrees in there. And uh, I glue up all four. And now what I'm making is the long table. This table is going to go against the wall. And Danny asked that we have a little backsplash so that we could add power strips to it. And so that's what I'm doing right now. So that's going to be a little return up, kind of like a backsplash. And I clamp it in place first. And while it's drying, I throw some screws in it. And since these frames are all over the room, stacking on top of one another, I was able to work directly underneath it. I pre-drill it, and then I put a 3-inch screw in. And there you see how it's going. And I'm painting them. Again, it was much too cold for a really decent paint job. So I painted everything with a flat black. It's the Rust-Oleum High Heat Black, which I find actually works kind of good. Most flat paint picks up a lot of fingerprints and stuff. But this is sort of has like a, a semi-gloss quality to it, even though it's still very flat. And considering it was very cold, it took some time for it to dry. But it, it did dry very well. And now here are my boards, and Willie and I are spending New Year's Day cleaning everything up. This is a final work day. We started the day after Christmas, and now it's New Year's Day. We're just finishing up. I made all those five-inch pieces a little long just to make sure that they scab in to the ends nice. Better to leave things long and work them in than coming up a couple of millimeters short. There again, I'm trimming that, working that in with the belt sander, scraper, palm sander and the final hand sand that you see Willie doing there. Palm sanding. I think I'm listening to reclaimed audio. And now this is a 50-50 mix of boiled linseed oil and mineral spirits. It basically just kinda gave it a little bit of a protective finish so it didn't pick up fingerprints and oil from the hands. And these tabletops are gonna be worked on Danny asked for something that he could renew, and I thought this would be a good option because 
once these get banged up and scratched, we could always just palm sand them back down. And now here I am, I'm attaching the frames to the tabletops. In some cases I work from underneath, in some cases I work from the top. Everything gets a couple screws in each edge. And there you go, you see that's the table, the long one with the little backsplash. So the tables are all interchangeable, kind of like plywood. Two next to each other will be just as wide as one across its short end. That makes sense. You can make a table that's five feet by ten feet with all four of these pushed together. And there you are, working out in the snow for the final shots. Chickens approve. And the gratuitous drone shot. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I like watching the transformation myself. Even though I made it, it's fun to see it all at once. Thank you.